Okay, welcome guys to a how-to video and what it's going to be is how to set up your pinball machine when it arrives uh, overseas or over the other side of Australia and how it will be packaged up. Okay, so we're going to show you how to put it together when you get the packaging off, which is this machine here in today's video. I'm going to show a couple. Now this one here is all packaged up, ready to go for local here in Australia and this is how we do it with the legs on when Bill our delivery guy is actually delivering it. So anyone local, you don't have to worry about the leg side of it. But this is what it will look like when it is wrapped more than what this one is. We don't want to have to double up on the tape, etc. So quite a couple of the boxes that will be going on top of it. But what you'll get is it'll be like this when you get it on the package, like there on the pallet. Okay, so you will be getting like reflection plates. Uh, this one, I think, has got a topper in there, like your cup. The box here will have all your bolts and stuff in it, etc. I'll actually show that in a second. You've got a reflection plate here. So when you open up the crate and you take all the sides off, it will look like this on top. Fragile tape and it will be like this sitting on top of the crate. Now you've also got polystyrene underneath it because you have lead strips and you'll see that more clear soon down both sides and they don't want to be crushed. So we're going to show you the correct way to set up one of our machines once you've unboxed it. And just to make it very clear, I'm gonna show a box here that's actually crated up. So this is what you'll be receiving. Now it's boxed up really well, crated here. We have reinforced steel to stop it pulling apart. Corners here, so if a forklift bangs anything into the side of it, you'll get no damage. So all four corners reinforced. So the first thing you'll have to do when you get it is you'll have to go through and take all the screws out of all the strapping, take these corners off, There'll be more strapping actually in underneath here. You'll have to take that off as well and unscrew all the screws, like take the top off first, unscrew it, get that off, and then do it in side panels where you take all the screws out and take one side panel off at a time. You work your way right round. Now that's gonna take you quite a while. We put a lot of screws in it, so it's well packaged. So obviously a hand, hand screwdriver wouldn't be as good as getting a drill. Screwdriver here, impact driver. If you have one. Another tool you'll be needing would be a socket like this for uh, putting the legs on. Okay so the purpose of the video, I've already got the legs unwrapped but what they would be is all wrapped up and they'd be sitting on top of here. Obviously I don't want to wrap them up yet as we actually still have to put the machine in a box as this one's heading over to USA. So once it's all unwrapped what you're going to have is you're going to have it like this so we're going to Come back in a minute and we're going to go through and show what to do exactly. Another thing to point out would be the power plug too. As this one's going to USA, what we've actually got is the power point plug adapter on the end of it. So wherever we send it to, you don't have to do anything. You just unwrap this and you'll see that this is a USA plug there with the round on it. It will go to whatever country we send it to and you'll plug it straight into the wall. Uh, inside the box, once you get it unwrapped, You'll find all the bolts for the legs with a washer on it. You'll find some extra cords, um, like the ASUS 120 hertz monitor here has got a control for it. So you'll find the likes of all that in here. You also will find instructions underneath on the glass, which you'll see when we unpackage this one here in front of you. Okay, so when we come back, what we're going to do is we're going to take these off the top and we're going to lift this up onto this lifter. Okay, so what I've actually also done is I've put a piece of timber in here. It's 16 mils in height. And the reason for it is when we put it underneath and we lift this actually on top, what we want is to not crush the lead lights. And I will show underneath it and you'll see what I mean. But so that the middle of the machine sitting on the pack of timber here, so the lights are not going to get crushed. So that's very important. Okay, let's get into setting up this machine. Okay, so the first thing obviously we want to get all this stuff off. So there'll be more than what's here. And now we're going to lift it up on top of the lifter there. Now it's pretty heavy guys, it's around 180 odd kg. Sit in place there. Okay, so what you'll see is it will sit on top of five stars. 
And we actually have a look underneath. You'll see that there's lead strips underneath there. Hence why you've got to be careful not to crush them and put that timber packer there so it's not getting crushed. And you do that right. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is put some legs on. Go up a bit higher. Now you can do this on saw stools as well. You don't have one of these lifters. We're going to get the cup ready for one of them, and these are the plastic protectors that go on the bolts. Let's get all them out. What I tend to like to do is just sort of leave them close to where I'm going to put the lead on. Get myself ready. And if you've got a chair that can help as well, do it strong. And I'll start at the back here. Okay, so I'm going to start with the purple leg. Normally they'll all be the same kind of legs, but on what you want, it's all different. Uh, can someone actually grab me one of those brackets so I can explain how they screw in as well? Okay, so you put the protective like that behind it. And what you'll see is there's two lots of slots. You want to put it up against it like so. Get the bolt started. Okay, someone just give me one of those. I just want to explain what's in, on the inside, just quickly so you understand it. This is on the inside of the machine, so the bolt is actually going to be screwing in, twisting in like this. Now, you do it by hand, you don't want to force it, because what will happen if you force it, it's not going in smoothly and hand tight. This can break its seal, and it will just keep spinning, and then the bolt, and this will keep spinning, you won't be able to tighten it up. I just wanted to explain that, that it's all hand tightened. It's pretty simple to do. Now to do this, when you get the bolt started, take the weight of the leg, so it's not hitting on it, and you just twist them in by hand. Now they'll twist all the way in. So don't force it, and you just want to hand tighten it. The second one, like so, you just got to take the weight of the leg. And you'll see that's quite tight there already by hand. It's all the way in, hand tight. Then you want to get yourself a socket like this. It's much better than a crescent or a shifter. And just put it on there and just tighten it up. But don't over tighten. Now a little tip too on this guys, is if you like to nudge a bit, you can loosen the bottom one off a bit, more of the bolts so you've got a little bit more nudging power, because they're very, very sturdy legs. And that is how you put on a leg, so we'll go around and we'll do all of them. Um, Craig, if you want to start putting on the other two on, I'll actually start putting the one on with the cup. Okay, so I'm going to grab a blue leaf this time. Next, now I'll do a green leaf. Okay, so this time, if you've got cup holders, normally you get one on the right. Some people get two. You put your protector in behind it. You grab your bolt. And this one's a right-handed. 
you see it says right on it. I like to stop, start at the top bolt, sort of put it in free like that. And it's just the same process. So just as before, just hand tighten it, get the second bolt, get that one started. Sort of take the weight of the leg so you can keep tightening it in by hand. Keep, keep tightening it up. But like I say guys, you don't want to force these bolts. Make sure they go in nice and easy as they will screw all the way out. Okay, same again. Tighten it up. Second one. Don't over tighten it. What will happen if you over tighten it? You'll crack this protector underneath it. You don't have to over tighten it until it's nice and sturdy. And that's how you put on the legs. And then I think we have all of them on there. Okay. Just that's the first part. I'm going to just grab a hold of the right foot there until you want to do it. So now it's ready to go back down onto the ground. like to cut it where you've got a little bit of room where you're not on the side of the cabinet with the back box sticking out a little bit. Try to get your scissors in and just cut where you've got plenty of room so you're not getting anywhere near the side of the cabinet. Like so. And cut it all off. Now you would find You'd have a little bit more polystyrene under here. We haven't done that in the video, but you'd have a bit of polystyrene under there holding up the topper. Okay, so what you actually see now is a little bit clearer. Now that's a US plug. Now we're here in Australia still, so we're going to be taking that off, so we can plug it in soon. And we want to put the back box up. Right, now to do this, open up the door. Now you've got a bit of slack on this. Now it's really important when it comes through the hole here, that you don't get anything snagged. So you don't want anything getting snagged or getting pulled out in the back here. So if someone wants to be controlling this while you put up the back box. Hey, you want to push it up quietly? Nice and slow. Just make sure nothing's getting snagged. Keep going. All the way up. And just guide it through. Then you've got a latch. Put the latch on so it can't go anywhere. So what you'll see, you've got quite a bit of slack there. So you just got to guide it through nice and quietly and just sort of tuck it in over the corner here, like so, so it'll be out of the way of the fan when that goes up. Okay, so things we're going to look for is, when you first get the machine, the travel cords can come a little bit loose, like HDMI. So what I'm going to show you is how to open up the back door. Two keys here. Before I do that, you actually plug this in. Plugs into the top, it'll come unplugged so it doesn't get damaged in the HDMI. We'll plug in. The HDMI and the power for the top of screen at the top. We're going to take this, get this open, so you simply just turn the keys and lift it out, like so. Okay, so what to look for? When it's in a ship, in a container, or it's getting 
transport it on a truck to your property. The HMIs here could come a little bit loose, so you've got to make sure they're in nice and tight. Push them in nice and tight. This is one of the common things that can happen and the screens won't turn on correctly if you don't check this. You've got your power there, make sure that's pushed in tight. Same as this when you push these in, they're nice and tight. And you've got a second one down here for the score. Make sure your HDMI is in tight there. And you're going to have these power boxes. Now they're going to have plugs in them. Now if you snagged it, you could have accidentally pulled that out a little bit. Just make sure it's tight. Just push on it. And you've got another one here. Same thing again, make sure it's nice and tight. Come down to the bottom. Now you want to do all this before you even bother trying to turn the machine on. It's the graphics card. Now, sometimes a graphic card can come up a little bit. So you just push down on it, make sure it's tight, down like so, and HDMI's. Make sure they're all pushed in. You've got four of them on this machine, all in nice and tight. And same with any USBs here, make sure everything's in tight, all the way along, anywhere it plugs into. Okay. Something else to mention would be, once you've got it up in place, like this, and you've got the back off it, it doesn't hurt to put another couple of screws in down through the cabinet here, so it can't go anywhere once you've got it set up at your place. And the door simply slots back in, like so, and you turn the keys. Okay, the keys themselves are just tied on like this, so you can just cut them off. It's just for packaging so they don't get lost, and we're ready to go. What we're going to do now is we are actually going to slide it across. Into place so we can plug it in. Okay, so when you first plug it in, it sh if you've got addressable leads, it should go through a circuit in all different colours. And that's a good sign that it's going well. Okay, so you're going to have instructions for the machine here, so I'm just going to cut that off. A little bit more cling wrap, like so. So here's the instructions, so you want to read through them. You'll find a hard copy actually on the desktop as well, so it's on the machine as well. And it's quite detailed, so make sure you read through that. Okay, another thing we need to do is put the reflection plate on. Now it goes up this way with the two screws under it. The first thing we need to do, you'll see there's two screws already in place. You need to take them all the way out. Just keep going the other side of the paper. It's easy to do it with two people, if you can. You hold it in place. Up here. Line the holes up, get your screw ready. Now you can do this with a hand, hand screwdriver, but if you've got an impact screwdriver, it will be a lot easier for you. Line the holes up and just do it in nice and tight. Okay, so that's the reflection plate. Now we've made sure all the plugs are tight. Now one other thing to show you, I guess, will be at the front, and it's the kit. Come back to your box that you unpackaged, and you'll also find in here, along with the remote, would be a set of keys. And that will open up the coin door. Now everything should be already set up, everything should already be on, uh, this, actually this bottom one's not, have a look at that. So make sure everything is turned on, the switches, everything is turned on. And then, 
should be ready to go. So you've got a power plug underneath the bottom corner here on the right. Just press it once. Now we'll take a minute or two and everything should turn on. And we've got all the HDMI's in nice and tight, the graphics card, all four screens should fire up correctly, so nothing should be scrambled and it'll be ready to play. Now one of the common things that can go wrong is one of the screens isn't turning on on HDMI, the screen numbering will be wrong and everything will be all scrambled and not look correctly. Just go to the desktop. Next thing, dot links should come up on the matrix there. So just wait, waiting for a script to tell it to go into popper. There you go. And just wait for the menu. And there she goes. This is it. Down. And we'll go and load again. Now when you first get it, some people will know what to do, but you've got to put in credits. You'll see credits come up on the back. You've got to press play one start. And away you go. Okay guys, so that's it, that's a how-to. It's how to set up your machine when you first get it, how to uncrate it, how to put the legs on, how to check for everything, make sure all the screens are turned on correctly. Like I say, if you go and build an Australia and the legs are already on, the machine you won't have to do that part. Okay, so also for those of you who ordered extra and you've got the tool one removal control, this will come in your package as well. You unwrap it. It's pretty simple guys. It's got protection sort of carpet on the back end there and you simply put it up against the side here. Just let it drop down and pull it hits the bottom of the lockdown bar. And when what you have is two USBs as well. You have a USB port, you just simply plug it in and plug the second one in. So that's what you need to do if you've got the two and one control. Play the play the arcade game from the back. Okay, when I come back, I'll show you one more thing. This topper up here will be in place with the screen. I'll show you how to put a topper in place that doesn't have the screen also if you've ordered one of them. Okay, so if you don't have a video topper monitor and you top and you just have a standard topper like this, it's on Perspex. What you'll see is we've got a layer of Perspex under here that sticks down 10 more millimetres more than the rest. It's a single layer of free mill and the reason for it is it's all very easy guys. you just got to slot it in between the groove up here. So this timber board will be already on the machine and you'll see a groove all the way down and you'll see the dressable leads that light up under it. You've got two brackets that just help it sit in place and it just sits there. Okay, so I'm just going to pass the camera over and I'll show you how easy it is. It just sits in place. What I like to do is try to get it to sort of one corner first, get it in and drop it down all the way until it's in place. Okay, so you're going to get fingerprints all over it when you're doing this. Then you want to give it a quick squirt. Get yourself a nice cloth with nothing on it so you don't scratch the perspex. Give it a nice clean. Like so. I like to do sort of in circles. And make sure you do it nice around the edge there too where it nicely glows up. All the way around. And there you go. Come back and use your topper.
So that's the end of the video guys on how to set up your machines. I hope you enjoyed these ones. And once again, thanks for watching.